everyone. My name is Savannah and welcome back to Mesa Gardens Zoo. This is our franchise kind of desert grasslandy zoo. We started a little while ago. I am loving how it's turning out so far and we're on episode like five or six. I don't know, something like that. Now, the reason before we jump right on into it that I have it paused is because these stupid protesters are back and I don't want them to get too far. God, look how angry this lady is. My Lord, she is she is very passionate about uh, the protesting. Oh, oh, OK, good. Hold on. Be right back. It's been disconnecting on me every once in a while, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. But anyway, so we've got protesters. Now, I know in the last episode we talked about maybe trying to get them to go this way. So I've actually mapped out this little area off camera because I really want to add the porcupine. So I wanted to add a new animal from the new arid animal pack. And I went through to look at the appeal of all of the different animals. And the porcupine actually has the potential to have kind of a high appeal. And I figure if we get maybe some of the guests to walk out this way and use this path, that maybe we can get them to disperse away from this main path just a little bit. The other thing that I want to try first off is I think I might throw like a, a exhibit animal down there. So if we grab a little exhibit box, maybe we can get them to walk this way. I did actually purchase or adopt or however you want to describe it a horned viper because there was only one in the trading center and I wanted to make sure that I snagged it. So our desert horned viper right here, I'm going to go ahead and put them into the box and then let's make sure that they are nice and happy and healthy. Uh, if I can remember how to navigate these boxes. Okay, great. Um, we do need oh, hit play. That means the protesters are going to get to walk, but we need to decrease the temperature just a little bit and then increase the humidity quite a lot and see what that gets us to. Okay, humidity is good. Down a little bit more. Okay, that should be good. So then maybe, I know they're not that exciting of an animal, but you know, go, go that way. Walk that way. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, because yeah, right now our flamingos are totally good everything except for stress. And the problem is, is that it comes and goes in waves. And like right now they're fine, but the protesters are already on their way. Oh, now they're on their way out. That's great. Um, I know I need to adjust the work zone. Just relax. But anyway, they get stressed and then the protesters come and then they go away, you know, so on and so forth. Now, the other question that I proposed during last uh, episode was moving the birds. And I got a lot of comments saying to leave them where they are. I also got a few comments suggesting different changes uh, for animals. And I think right now I'm going to go ahead and leave them where they are and see if we can't just make this work because I really like their exhibits. I really like the idea of flamingos and cranes being the first thing that you see when you walk into the park, because for me, that's just realistic. It's just what animal would be at the beginning of a park. And look, we already have guests going this way, so it's potentially working. And then once we get our porcupine in here, maybe it'll work a little bit better. So that's going to be the plan for today. Now, before I forget, let's go into our work zone and see, uh, let's see, the food court exhibits were the ones that I had those guys on, right? If we click on this and edit the work zone, yeah, so they are taking care of all of these guys. I might throw this one on there as well. I know it's a little bit out of the way, but that way they can take care of them. There are three staff in this work zone. It looks like three keepers, right? That's the, that's, yeah, that's the symbol for a keeper. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> so there's three keepers on that. We may potentially need to add more eventually, but we can also just do some training as you guys suggested. This one right here is being trained up to three stars, three stars, but it looks like their workload is all efficient. Uh, you're struggling a little bit, so maybe we give you some training. Actually, let's train all of our vets up to, oh, apparently I can't uh, train that one. Oh, he's already training, it's working. Okay, train them up to three stars, that would be great. And then maybe our mechanics as well. 
and everybody really for that matter. Let's just make everyone three stars that we can. Our vendors seem to be struggling a little bit as well. So let's train them up and see if that helps. And if it doesn't, then uh, we can always hire more. Can we get train in there? Beautiful. Okay, fantastic. Because we are not hurting for money whatsoever. Um, and it also looks like we got some more uh, points, some conservation credits as well. I listed some of my animals from storage onto the market. It looks like there's a couple more that are still for trade just to try to get us actually, you know, we can trade. Oh no, we can't. Quick trade is the only option for that one. Um, just to get some more conservation credits. Can we put any of these guys up there? No, not really. We can put this uh, tortoise. Let's put this tortoise up there for a, a hundred. Why not? It's not the greatest tortoise, but maybe we'll get somebody adopting him. Um, this one as well. Maybe we'll do, we'll do 75 for this tortoise. I don't know. I'm just picking random numbers because I really want more, uh, conservation credits. And that way we can get some more animals because let me show you as soon as I get this one up there as well, I was able to adopt. Where is it? I might have to sort for it. Yeah, I'll probably have to sort for it. I adopted, ah, here we go. I adopted an African crested porcupine already because when I looked in the market, there really weren't a whole lot of options for me. And it looks like there's a couple more now. We don't have a female, we only have a male. Oh wow, like a whole lot of them got added on here. But because they're a new animal, they're like so expensive. People want so, oh, and we lost $500. Anyway, they're so expensive and I wanted to be able to uh, have one. So let's actually, let's save our conservation credits. I know those ones are worth way more as far as their genetics go. They're so much better, but I really want to save up our conservation credits. This one's fertility and immunity is much better. I think I'll go with this one and I hear protesters in my ear. So anyway, now we have a male and a female uh, porcupine. What the heck is your guys' problem again? Uh, shocker, it's the flamingos stressed out again. Oh, and then just so that you guys are aware as well, I got a couple comments about the little signs. So the little quiet signs are already here. They're just underneath the ground because I hate, hate the look of them. I think they're so ugly. Um, get away from the guests. Go back over here. You know what? Maybe what if we... Oh, that's not going to work because this is a franchise mode. I was going to push the invisible barrier like back to here so that they didn't walk any further. Um, maybe, you know what? Let's try to use the elephant grass to our advantage here. And maybe if we can put it underground where it's not visible and kind of block the flamingos from walking... We might be able to keep them a little bit a ways away from the guests. I just want to make sure that this isn't going to be too small of an area. But this is a thought that actually just occurred to me. And I have no idea if this is going to work. But if we kind of keep them away a little bit, we might have to rehome some flamingos, though, because... Uh, their space is going to be affected. Let's see. Um, hold on, hold on. My goodness. The protesters are so stressful. I hate listening to them. Um, that didn't really affect their traversable area at all. What if I raise this? Does that work? Oh, it boxed all of them. Okay, well... <laughs> okay, well, that worked. Uh, it's not hidden. But maybe that will be helpful for now. Let me just check. Their space is obviously way, way too low now. Um, God, why are flamingos so hard? Why are they so annoying? They, they, we could have so many more flamingos in this space. Like, they do not need all of this space for as little flamingos as they have in there. Like they live in massive flocks and colonies. Um, and so I just get a little frustrated with the space requirements for these guys. But um, 
Maybe we just bring a few of them into the Trade Center for now? Let's see, who are you? Let's bring you to the Trade Center. Trade Center. Let's bring you to the Trade Center. And you can go to the Trade Center as well. And you can go... Why do all their names start with an A? Okay, does that help? That makes it a little better. Their stress is still... Their stress is still kind of hovering around like 1%. So go back over there. And does that help if you're like back over there? How come when you go all the way to the back of the exhibit, it still doesn't help? Oh, hello. Okay, be right back, I guess. Okay, back. This is going to be the most stressful franchise episode I have ever recorded. Between my flamingos freaking out and my internet keeps disconnecting from the game for whatever reason. I mean, it's not my internet. It's the game for whatever reason. I'm so stressed out. Anyway, I am so afraid to take it off of pause because the noise of the protesters is just so angry and so loud. This is not working. So I'm going to get rid of the, uh, the elephant grass there. And let's just, I mean, honestly, because I don't want to worry about it too much right now, I'm going to make a wall. I'm going to build a wall so that they don't have to see anything that's happening. And we'll just put a wall up right here. And I know that's going to affect the guests. But, you know, if they don't want to freak out the animals, maybe they should just be a little quieter and respectful. But until I can figure things out, we'll do that. And that should hopefully help our little flamingos, right? Okay, so I understand, I understand. Keep keep charging me, because that's definitely going to help me uh, afford to fix the problem. Okay, stress is going back up. Social group is going back up. It's Or not going back up. It's staying the same, but it's it's acceptable. Their welfare is all fine and dandy now. You can go away. The flamingos are much happier. You can see it's all fixed. And you screaming in front of their enclosure is definitely uh, contributing to stressing them out. The heck are you going? Protesters can... What? That has to be a glitch. They're not allowed to walk on paths for staff. Who do you think you are? What? What is... That? Okay. All right. Well, has anybody ever seen that before? I have never seen guests walk on staff path. They just... They just all up in, all up in my business here. Good lord. How rude. I know, I don't really want to read my inspection report. Okay, so there's that. Oh gosh, this is such a nightmare. I wonder, um, without making too much of a problem, would I be able, I won't because this is curved right here. So I won't be able to connect this. Man, I wish I would have just made it a little bit bigger. And if I disconnect it, it's going to mess everything up. But let me just... I'm just going to move some people since they're getting a little squished anyway. And maybe we'll just... I don't know. Suggestions always welcome down in the comments because I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, I'm just kind of winging it and figuring it out as I go. So if you have any suggestions... For anything that we can do to kind of help this situation, I would greatly appreciate it. But I'm just trying to uncongest this little path right here so that people actually have room to walk and get around each other. Because, yeah, they're bumping into each other quite a bit. Why do I still hear protesters if they've all got their signs down and they're walking away? Is it because they're stuck here? I mean, just... It's not that hard to walk around each other, I feel. Let the protesters out. For for my own sake and sanity, just let the protesters leave. <laughs> they want to get out of the zoo. They need to get out of here. Okay, and there's not really anything else I can move to kind of clear up the space. Because there's not really anything that they are 
getting stuck on other than themselves, which is the unfortunate part. So, I don't know. It's kind of a fatal flaw in my design, I think, um, starting from the very beginning. So I might have to just figure out if I can fix this uh, during our time lapse. Anyway, so... As the light comes up, it looks like we're getting at least some people to go over this way. So that's great. Um, we'll add the porcupine here. Last episode, we got a lot of work done on our orangutans. They are very happy over here in their exhibit. <gasps> and we got a baby already. I didn't even notice. Ah, oh, look at you. You're so cute. <laughs> You're so cute. Little male. So we definitely need a name for him. I have not gotten any name suggestions for the orangutans yet, but I have a lot of suggestions for flamingos, siamangs, and gibbons. So we'll do that at the end of this episode and uh, name some more of our animals. But I think uh, without further ado, let's just get into our time lapse. I want to try to fix, maybe I'll try to fix some of this. Um, and we're gonna add our porcupine and that might actually get people to go over to this section of the zoo and leave our stupid birds alone, <laughs> hopefully. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get into it. Oh my goodness, you guys, this episode took me so long. The crashes were unbelievably annoying. I do not understand what the heck was going on with franchise mode over the past couple weeks, but literally every time I would load in, I would only get to play for maybe 10, 15 minutes or so before it crashed again. So you will see that here in this time lapse. It crashed multiple times while trying to get this speed build done. I actually had to do this one little habitat that we don't even get close to being finished in four different sittings because the crashes were so bad. It did allow me to get in and record the very end of the episode and no more crashes. So hopefully knock on wood, it has figured out whatever its issue was. If you have any sort of idea or helpful tips or hints, do let me know because this is the first time I've ever had any issues with franchise mode connecting to the internet basically is the little error that it was showing. You saw that in the very beginning of the video and uh and yeah i don't i don't know what i did and i don't know what i did to fix it so you know we're just gonna go with it but we're starting on our porcupine habitat now this first wall that i'm building i end up absolutely hating <laughs> i do not like it at all and so i left it in the video because like always i do like to keep many things that i don't actually use if i did build them in speed builds because I never know what's going to inspire you. This wall is not what I was looking for for Mesa Garden Zoo or this porcupine habitat, but it might be something that would fit your project really well and so could potentially be inspiring to whatever you're working on. So I do like to leave things in if I can. But you can see there that I went over and I took a look at our Red River Hog habitat and I took some inspiration from there because I really like how the fencing turned out on that exhibit. And so I'm going to kind of use some of the uh, same materials and some of the same ideas for this porcupine habitat. I end up keeping it very, very simple, doing a little bit of a double fence there to keep guests back off. I don't end up liking this kind of mesh, custom mesh that I'm making on top here. I just don't think that it goes with what I'm going for with this exhibit. So I do end up getting rid of that, but we keep this corrugated metal and this wood topped uh, kind of fence line uh, in, in the exhibit. And then we use this little log piece to do our kind of secondary barrier. And we'll put some plants and foliage in between there, some landscaping to make it nice and pretty keep guests from, you know, dangling over trying to pet the porcupine because that would obviously be safety hazard. We don't want them petting our porcupines, scaring them or potentially getting quilled because that just seems like a liability waiting to happen. So that's what I end up going with. Now, I will say we talk about this a little bit in the end part of the video as well. Um, they need so much space and I I'm a little annoyed about it, to be honest, because these smaller animals like the porcupine, the fennec fox, the meerkat, the 
prairie dog, all these animals that should be little kind of corner side exhibits. When you're playing in franchise, they need so much room. And obviously in franchise mode, you have to keep into account what they want. Otherwise they're unhappy, brings in protesters, all that kind of nonsense that we have to deal with when we're playing franchise. And it's just a little frustrating because I wanna create these more petite exhibits for the zoo that are a little bit more realistic looking and and you know don't in my mind look too small they don't look cramped but in this exhibit that we end up building we put two porcupines in it a male and a female and it ends up being like just just enough space for two of them um so hopefully they will have babies and we will have multiple porcupines but we're going to have to be real careful about how many we allow to mature and how many are allowed to live in there at once because it's not going to be a a big group of them but I'm trying to bring in some rounded architecture with this build to get away from the more square builds of the food court, just to give it a bit of contrast, a little bit more interest. I'm using here a lot of the twilight wood pieces because they're my obsession right now. I love how they look in Mesa Garden Zoo, so they're probably going to be a running theme throughout the entire project. But I'm also using those planks from the Australian pack. Those, again, are one of my go-tos. I absolutely love their color and their texture. And then we're using lots of mud walls, these off-the-grid pieces. Um, they're recolorable, so that's great, but they also give just a little bit of texture in between these planks that really add to the detail of this building. This little building in the back of the porcupine habitat is accessible to them. We do test out and make sure that they can go in and out of that little door that I made. And that's my way of getting around how much space they actually needed. So I allow them to go back into the building and, uh, and that way they aren't too cramped and they can also get away from the guests if they are going to get stressed or anything like that. So I think it does work out, although as I already mentioned, it's a lot more space than I originally thought that they might need. But this whole building's just going to be basically a flat topped building, very utilitarian and boring in the back. It's really got just this front kind of facade decoration. And then the back of it's just going to be a plain old building. I do uh, want to continue it over to the left of this exhibit to cover up some of the facilities that we have over there and the restroom that's right next to this exhibit. So that's the plan going forward. And there is also room if we extend this building over on the right hand side as the path goes down and away from this exhibit, we can potentially add maybe meerkats or maybe um, some other like African small animal. Please let me know your suggestions down in the comments. But I'm all for making this building seem like it's a dual purpose, multiple exhibit service area. Um, and not just for the porcupines, because I want to make it so this zoo... Oh, see, look, there we got another crash <laughs> loading up again. Um, I do want to make it so the zoo is a little bit more realistic in that sense, and not every exhibit's going to have a service area directly connected to it, and some service areas would make sense to share them if the animals are you know, similar enough, their care requirements are the same, and that keepers would have the same kind of equipment and stuff in the back area to service the animals and the exhibit. So do let me know because after adding these guys, I don't have a plan for what's next. We still have to, that was almost a crash. We still have to handle the um, flamingos and the red crown cranes. I'm procrastinating because I don't know what to do about them and I kind of don't want to deal with it and the wall is working for now so I'm kind of leaving that up and letting it do its thing but eventually we do have to do something about that. So again, comments, suggestions, feedback, always welcome down in the comment section and it really does help me out because I look to you guys to really kind of direct this franchise series. My speed builds are kind of done, you know, I, I build things, I put them out, and I do take into consideration comments and suggestions, but not as much as I do with this franchise series. So I am very happy to hear what you uh, suggest and what you might think. 
but here we're just detailing out, putting a few logs all around the place. I did have to keep this a little bit to a minimum because it shrinks down the traversable space for the porcupine. And I want to make sure, again, since we're dealing with such a crunched space anyway, that I didn't want to make it uh, uh, completely untraversable for them and that they just kind of stayed in the back area. I do want them to come out here into the front area and uh, be visible for the guests. But with their high appeal, guests are already flocking over to see them when they do come outside. So hopefully it'll take a little bit of the attention off of our birds. We're gonna end this time lapse here uh, in just a few seconds. So let's head back over to real time Savannah. All right, despite all the crashes, I got it somewhat done. We, uh, we're not going to look at the back for now because that is nowhere near complete. And I might just complete that one off camera since it's not that interesting, but we have the front and we have our porcupines in the exhibit. And as you can see, very, very happy, 89% welfare, but their space is still, still just, just on the edge. And we only have two of them. So in my opinion, this is way too large of a habitat, so much space for these little guys and what they need in game, but it's franchise. We're going to go with it. At least they have lots of hard shelter and they have plenty of space to escape from guests. If for whatever reason they were going to get stressed, I went ahead and threw in some education and a couple different uh, donation bins. I really want to make this like a cute little planter here put plants in between here all the way around and then obviously continue this building to do the back of it and then thinking it can encompass this restroom right here encompass these facilities as well as the water quality stuff and the generator so I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna fill this whole area in just yet but eventually eventually we will now, I did record it, but I had a glitch in my recording software as well. So I'm just going to go through and show you what I did as I named some of our animals for the suggestions that I got in the comments. So we now have Blinky. We have Flora was already there. Uh, we have Inky is a new one. And then we have uh, Oasis was already there. Diamond was already there. Clyde is a new one. And then where did our other baby go? Because our other baby had a name has a name did he go like to the vet or something he might have gone to the vet but it was uh inky blinky and clyde are the three names that i used we need one more flamingo to be named pinky and then we have all the ghosts of pac-man in our exhibit so there's that and then we also had some names for the monkeys so our alpha siamang is this you is dave look at him Dave fits him perfectly, doesn't it? <laughs> and then we also had uh, Tarzan, this one, this little guy right here. And then for our Lar Gibbons, not you, uh, we had Dusty and Mr. Banana. So those are our names that we got in the suggestions. I don't have any suggestions for our orangutans yet. And then we definitely, definitely need to name our little porcupine friends. So leave those in the comments below. I'm so excited about how this zoo is coming out. Next episode, we absolutely need to address this so that we don't have to have these walls. I don't know, I might come up with some sort of decorative wall and keep this blocked off on either side. So like you come up and maybe, I don't know, maybe you can smell the birds, but you can't see them until you get around the corner because having guests view in these locations there and there specifically, have really helped uh, stop all the stress and things. I really haven't gotten a lot of notifications about them freaking out. So obviously these are really ugly and we don't want them to stay, but I don't know what to do about them just yet. So I know I asked about moving these guys. I got a bunch of mixed comments uh, in the comment section about what to do with them. So if you have ideas, uh, let me know down below and we will uh, we'll see what we can do. But that's pretty much it. I have no idea how long this episode is going to be because it's honestly given me such problems, which I'm sure I talked about in the uh, in the time lapse. But as always, comments, feedback, suggestions down in the comments. Leave a like if you made it this far and subscribe for more because I want to keep this zoo going. 
And, uh, and that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!